Hello. Good morrow. Welcome to the Phantom Podcast. I'm Griffin. I'm David. Uh, with us always is our uh, poet laureate, uh, producer Ben, the Ben Deucer. Hello, Fennel. Hello, Fennel. Hello, Fennel. Yes, Jake. Uh, <laughs> uh, w- welcome to the Phantom uh, Podcast. Uh, last week we we tackled a difficult subject. We oh boy. tackled uh, Jar Jar Banks. We tackled Griffin Newman's tenth grade essay on uh, racism. Yep, yep. I was going to say my Messiah complex <laughs> for solving the racial ills of the world, and for the second time since I wrote my infamous tenth grade paper back in blackface. Or can you show me how to get to Racism Street? I forgot that that was the subtitle. Right, right. And of it was the paper. cover story of the New Republic that month. The Saint Anne's Ram, but sure. <laughs> Uh, much as that uh, uh, essay, uh, setback race relations, two thousand years. <laughs> I think <laughs> setback race relations to a long, long time ago in a galaxy, in a far, galaxy far, 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 away. far away. I think last week's episode might it might have caused uh, a similar damage. Yes, uh, to white people <laughs> at large. <laughs> yes. Um, so this week, because of that, and because uh, I've I've had a crappy morning so far, uh, I'm in terms with my uh, uh, health insurance. And so I was not able to refill my anxiety medication, which has given me preemptive anxiety attacks about the anxiety attacks I'm going to have. Um, I also uh, uh, put on socks uh, with holes in the heels today and then wore the shoes that have the itchy heels. So my heels are bleeding. I forgot to tell you guys that. (laughs) We talked for a good hour uh, before recording, but you did not mention that your heels were bleeding. <laughs> we were talking about which supporting performances in Adam McKay movies deserved an Oscar nominations. The answer is several. We came up with like six or because seven. Because I would also, know, I didn't even, Gary Cole in Talladega Nights for sure I would nominate yeah. him. Gary Cole, Talladega yes. Nights, uh, uh, Michael Keaton and, and the Paul other Rudd guys. Paul Rudd and Anchorman. Paul Rudd and Anchorman. It's gotta be Rudd. It's yeah, gotta be oh, Rudd. agreed. It's gotta agreed. be Rudd. No question. Um, uh, when he's yelling at the pandas? Yeah. Uh, like three performances in Step Brothers. Uh, um, y- yeah, basically the, the cast of Step Brothers. The cast of Step Brothers. Oh, yeah. Anyway, anyway, that's not what this podcast is about. This podcast is about Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace, which, of course, was the first and only entry in George Lucas's planned Star Wars saga. He had a whole vision, mm-hmm. but we all know that films chronologically start with the first one, and yep. that's what we all saw, and then we never saw any other ones because I don't think they were made. As Gary Cole says, if you ain't first, you're last. Hey. Nice tie-in. Bam. Um, but so I'm in a crappy mood. We, we, Sorry. No, it's fine. We. Uh, How are you doing, Griffin? <laughs> <laughs> Misa not doing so good right now. Okay. Um, but uh, we, we, want, we want to tackle something easy and fun and light. How about we discuss a thing that everyone can agree on as being probably the strongest. The, the, probably the best sequence in the movie. Yeah, and if not the best, I think it's the one sequence everyone can agree is good. I don't. I think it is the one thing that people complain about the least. Yes, that's about as positive as I think people can be about this movie in a consensus. And I think that's how right. they feel about the pod race. Yes, we still gonna talk about <laughs> pod racing, Poodoo. and we should be good friends for a long time. <laughs> um, we should thinking. We should thinking. Yeah. So, of course, in the films, Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace, yeah. there is a two-headed announcer, uh, Foden Bead. Fode and Bede, bro. Uh, uh, f- Fode speaks in Huttese? Is that uh-huh. right? Or is it Bede? I think it's I think uh, it's Fode. Maybe yeah. it's Fode. Well, which one is Greg Proops? Gotta look it up. You know what? Let's go to Wikipedia All right, right you know now. What? Before we even get started, let's do a little Wikipedia sub. And this episode- Wikipedia? This episode's going to be real quick, because I'm on a grouchy mood. Oh, yeah. It'll be real fast. But this is what we're going to do. We're going to watch the pod race in real time. We have it queued up right here. You can watch along with us. We're going to be our own two-headed announcer, our own Foden and Bede, mm-hmm. and, uh, and then that's going to be the episode. I think we're just going to get it done in like 12 minutes. Well, there's a little bit of setup we want to do, but yes, the sequence itself is, a, what, 12 minutes long? Maybe we'll like all have to stop once or twice to mention something. But Greg Proops is Fode, okay. and uh, the other guy is Bede, so the other guy is the Huttese one. Great. Um, Greg, Glad we solved that. Greg Proops also should have been nominated for an Oscar for this one. <laughs> um... <laughs> You really should, guys, should listen to the Wolf Pop podcast. I was there, too. Greg Poops talks about his experience making this movie. It's great. What if you and I just did a podcast where we listed things, performances we think should have been nominated for an Oscar? That sounds great. That's the majority of our conversations. It really is. But, like, we would actually have to be very focused about it and be like, no, there's only five slots in 1998. Yeah. And so here are the five things. Yeah. 
That'd be great if we yeah, just the did Oscar every rundown. year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, you know how many people would listen to that podcast? Two and a half. Yes. <laughs> One of them would be just a lower body. It would be the parents <laughs> from Cow and Chicken. It would just be Sunny and Leg. But only one of the parents from Cow and Chicken, you're saying. Yeah. Because it would just be one half. Yeah. No. Mom would be into it. Dad would not. Right. Um, do you want to – do you want to – you pulled up a Foden bead? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 D- on Wikipedia? Do you, do you want to go into their backstory at all before we get – start? because it's a quick episode. We don't – you know? Oh, it, it's it's super fast. But, yeah. um, well, I mean, why don't you talk for a second just about, I don't know, uh, the pod race in general? Like, what, what sure. what's going on here? Sure. Just to catch everyone up. And if you want to watch along with us, we're at 55 minutes and four seconds is the magic number. We're about to start. It's the first establishing shot of uh, the, the – it's not a stadium. It's just a bunch of stands set up near near sort of a rock carving. Yeah, well, right? it's sort of like a NASCAR – Yeah. A section of a NASCAR track. But, yeah, it's not really a track. But it's huge. This is an interesting it's thing co- about the Padres. so big. Yeah. Is that um, most of it is not visible. No. Yeah. from You mean for the audience in yeah, the stands? stands oh, are no. only set up at the starting line, which is also the finish line. Right. Um, it's – very similar. It's really not NASCAR. It's very similar to Formula One, mm-hmm. which is what I think. What I think is being uh, spoofed here, which is basically, you know, like the greatest you, Formula One race. You're saying in, it's a spoof and a goof. It's a spoof and a goof. Okay, and it's classic spoof goof. Oh, right, sure. And uh, and uh, in Formula One, you know, the most famous ones in Monaco, where they race through the whole city, and it's yeah. uh, you know, you've got audience members waiting at the finish line. Right. But really, the cars go all over them, wind around, and it's right. a very, very high speed. Uh, like in Iron Man 2. We all know, yes. Oh, just uh, the, the Bravura Formula 1 secrets from Iron Man 2 that yeah. we all love. Marvel yeah. Universe's high point yeah. in, in, as cinema. Yeah. Uh, I just got a, an alert on my uh, computer that I should call back my father. You should do it now, says this Not reminder. Not going to. Hit okay. the snooze Sorry, button. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Peter. Oh, Peter. All right. Uh, yeah, well, Foden and Bede are the pod race announcers. Okay. Yes, they are. Um, uh, Troig is the name of their species. Oh, they are a two-headed brother. species. Uh, Fode, are- Fode speaks in a basic drawl, says Wikipedia, and uh, okay. Bede speaks in Hutties. Do we know if uh, all members of their species have two heads or if they are some uh, freak of nature, an abomination? That's a great question, and I'm loading the Troig entry now. Uh, yes, they are two-headed, two-necked, four-armed creatures. Are all creatures in that species announcers or a color commentator? That, <laughs> that is not made clear. Yeah. Uh, but they are a yeah. They're they're a, yeah. They're pretty interesting. I mean, you never see uh, his full body, but here's a picture of his full body. It's pretty freaky. Oh boy. Anyway, um, um, yeah. So that's the announcer. Uh, it's it's. I mean, this movie. I think. I don't think Lucas talks about it uh, in the commentary, but Ben Hur feels like an yes. obvious uh, reference point mm-hmm. for it. The the chariot race in Ben Hur, right? Yes. Um, I don't know what's another racing movie. Le Mans. Sure. Uh, Grand Prix. Grand Prix. Yeah. Uh, uh, we could do this all day. Uh, Driven, written by Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> Great movie, starring Kip Pardue and Till Schweiger. Yep. Um, George Lucas, uh, uh, when he was at UCLA, made uh, experimental films that were mostly focused on sound and movement, which makes sense. Yes, and 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 I would say the sound is the best thing about the pod yes. race, and everything. I think I yeah. I, I want to say on the record, I really enjoyed the pod sequence. race. I think it looks yeah. great on the big screen. It looks great on a Blu-ray. It's mm-hmm. just a gorgeous looking, Agreed. It's beautifully the, constructed. You know, the technology that, of the film is in general pretty good, but here it's I feel like the most seamless. It, you know, you don't detect the green screen at all. Agreed. Uh, it has a bit of physicality to it, a I bit, of, bit say, of weight. Some of, some of the shots, you can tell there's an actual physical pod racer. Yes. Even with the CGI creatures, they build some of the engines and stuff, and they're right. intercut. It's a nice blend of practical and and, and they have effects. they have a slightly sort of worn, you know, they don't mm-hmm. just have it's, we're not these aren't some Naboo silver racers, you know, God no in Naboo, who right. knows what a race would look like there. Too much of Phantom Mass looks too clean. I like. The idea of a sci-fi universe that is yeah. kind of worn, like yeah, that would a be little cool. gritty. That would be cool. Where that like, would be cool. there's there's scoring along the spaceships, mm-hmm. and you know everything seems to be built like out of spare parts, a little yeah. hodgepodge. You know, some kind of like big weird shaped spaceship, mm-hmm. like almost shaped like a saucer or something, would be cool, rather than your typical sleek, you know, aerodynamic thing. But it doesn't work perfectly. You got to hit it a little. It's like oh an old yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah. lights are always blinking, and yeah. you know, who knows? Yeah. Yeah. I love the sound of that. That would have been a cool movie. Anyway, back at UCLA, most of his films were about cars and racing. He just filmed a lot of cars moving. So this feels like the sequence he's most engaged with. Is this is like That's really interesting. 
it, where his passions and lie. And it's probably – it's a sequence that like is not very relevant to the film. Like this is a film nope. about a trade blockade mm-hmm. in Naboo. Yep. And this is a, a a very minor detour, just so that Qui Gon and Amidala can get like their hyperdrive fixed. And so this slave, and can this is like a huge chunk of the movie. Yeah, yeah. To and a so and Qui Gon can acquire, <laughs> right? Can acquire this slave from right. a slave owner in a, a chance cube bet, right? Um, chance yeah. cube, chance cube, chance cube. Yeah, from a from a Jew to a Goy, the slave will be transferred. Yes, or a Jew to a stocky Irishman. Yeah, uh, and uh, but that, what I'm saying is like this is the second act of the movie, mm-hmm. and this the pod race is the biggest sequence in it. The Danny Mall. but it's you know not that like you could have just had him like steal the hyperdrive from Agreed. Watto, and it, the whole the Tatooine adventure would take like ten minutes. Agreed, and the, and the stakes feel weirdly slow. It's a thrilling sequence because it's thrillingly constructed, but you right. don't really care. If you don't he wins really. I mean, not. you figure Anakin will win because he yeah. kind of needs to win for the story to move forward. Yeah. So. You know, that's maybe the one problem, yeah, like, because it begins with these stakes of, like, uh-oh, like, is everything going to work out okay? And you're like, well, probably. Probably, if not, who cares? They just... If not, whatever. He'll probably just, like, brandish his laser sword and start chopping people up. They'll get a hyperdrive from someone else and they just won't own a little sherb-faced boy. Yeah, and also, like, they visit one city. Yeah. And Watto's like, I have the only hyperdrive. Go to another city. Yeah, other you city. have a ship. Yeah. Like, you can't go into hyperdrive, but you don't yeah. need to go to hyperdrive to visit other cities on this blasted planet. This isn't Coruscant. The whole planet isn't one city. Interesting thing about Tatooine. Yeah. The, uh, as I learned on Wikipedia, the settlements are all just right at the top <sighs> because it's such a, a hot really? uh, planet that, like, you can only settle near the polar caps oh. so um that so it's all it's all sort of grouped around at right, the top. so it's close all yeah, the other exactly. it's, it's sh- yeah. you can just catch a bus okay 55 minutes four seconds well wait wait you sure we want to start right now i think we, a little more backstory about wado or you want to talk about my guy i think we should talk about wado a little bit just a little bit before we start the pod you know because what i mean how long we've we been running ben 12 minutes yeah you know come on yeah i can't give him a 24 minute episode no exactly Who are just we? a Kiefer little Sutherland? <laughs> Excuse me, those episodes were 42 minutes long. I don't think so. <laughs> was that the premise of the show? <laughs> was that each episode was only 24 minutes at a time? That's what made the show unique, was that most other sitcoms are 22 minutes long, and 24 was the one sitcom that was 24 minutes long. Yeah, maybe you're right. I forgot that it was shot on a soundstage in Beverly Hills. In front of a live studio audience. <laughs> in real time. Uh, I missed 24. That was a good show. Great show. Fine. Anyway. <laughs> Funny. Funny. That's Griffin's review of 24. Funny. Funny. Um, <laughs> maybe they'll put that on the DVDs retroactively. Funny, Griffin Newman, the yeah. Phantom Podcast. Yeah. Like that. That's what it'll say. Hey, it's going to be valuable. Um, so let's talk about Tatooine. Okay, let's talk Come about on. Tatooine. It's an outer rim planet, which means yeah. it is far from the galactic center of business and it's not uh, in the Senate. Yeah. It is controlled. Oh, you seem a little <laughs> dismayed by all of this information. Oh, go on. You really just want to hit play? My ankles are bleeding so much. No, go on. <laughs> go on. <laughs> it's an outer rim planet. Uh, it's it, controlled by the huts. Yeah. Which um, we see. Well, let's not get to that because we're going to – We'll get to that in a second. But but I remember when they land, uh, Qui-Gon's like, well, they're not going to find us here because it's controlled by the huts. And everyone's like, the huts? Are you crazy? The queen can't go there. They're delicate features. They're lawless. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So, yeah, they're gangsters, the huts. Mm -hmm. And um, Tatooine is this – it's probably the most agreeable location of the three big locations in the movie, I think, because of the stuff we're talking about. Agreeable to us? Yeah, to the audience. Like, it's more fun. It's a little dangerous, you know. It's tactile. Yeah. And uh, it's it's this sandy. It was shot in uh, Africa in Tunisia. Oh boy! Yeah, and uh, oh boy, what oh boy to the word sandy. Oh, I like it sandy. Yeah. Um, and uh, and so our heroes land in Tatooine. Mm-hmm. They go look for a hyperdrive. Our heroes and Jar Jar <laughs> land in Tatooine. <laughs> we we talked about this earlier, but it is insane that of the people they have yeah. on the ship, they bring Jar Jar Binks. Yeah. Um, and Padme. And Qui Gon, that's it, right? That's the mm-hmm. and R two, no R two stays. No, aboard. he's no, he's there. Really? I'm pretty sure. Why would they take him? <laughs> Again, who knows? Also, <laughs> their decision seen, making is very, very peculiar. The fact that we've seen this movie like 20 times and we still <laughs> we can't still remember don't know these details. <laughs> I don't think that's a criticism on uh, on us. I think that's a criticism on the film. I yeah, think that's, everyone's so interchangeable at all times, basically. Yeah, and also it's just hard to follow what the fuck <laughs> is right, happening. Right. I've seen it so many times and I'm still not really sure. 
they what's have going on one thing they do which is get a hyperdrive yeah i know That's that the much. one thing they need to do they go to one store yep. it is owned by a flying a, jew a little flying <laughs> jewish man named watto with a big old belly he is a toy darian means you can't play any mind tricks on him bro which means he's basically like a big fat tummy mm-hmm. and little hands and feet Yep. And little wings that are flapping all the time. And kind of a shriveled skull head with a big floppy skin nose. Yeah, he's got an uncircumcised nose. Yeah, with this, yeah, it's got like wrinkles in it. You yeah. know, it's it's a really like care. And he's got like four teeth. Mm-hmm. And he has stubble. He has like a beard, which is really yeah. gross, which he's really rubbing gross. all the time. Mm-hmm. And he's, uh, he kind of, he has bulges, bulbing, bul- bul- bulbous eyes. Yes. And he talks like, I don't know, you can do water better than me, probably. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> that's really full. That's, that's the key to water. <laughs> he owns a store. <laughs> he has two slaves, yep. a somewhat petite, sort of quiet, placid woman named Shmi Skywalker. Yeah. And his uh, and her son, uh, Anakin, who's an eight-year-old slave. I don't know if we've discussed this in the past. Go ahead. And I don't know if it's crass I'm talking how to turn. Do we think Watto's sticking it to Shmi? Uh, we have discussed we this. We have discussed this. this. Because you discussed whether... Yeah, Watto's the father? Whether Anakin has an uncircumcised Watto oh, right, nose yes. for a penis. <laughs> yes. um, well, you know, Shmi says that Anakin was uh, 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 amazingly conceived Bullshit. out of nowhere. Bullshit. And uh, Qui-Gon thinks maybe the Force conceived him. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, the Force in Watto's pants. <laughs> Watto's the father. Uh, yeah, so, um, I mean, she does not seem to have any relationship with anyone else in the movie. And uh, Watto's whole operation, he's kind of like, I mean, I've been watching a lot of Star Trek. He's kind of like a Ferengi in Star Trek. And so? um Well, you know, he's sort of like a wheeler dealer who um, doesn't mess around and uh, is always looking for the right bargain and the right deal. And right, he's sort of like... It, much like the, that race. It's like this sure. sort of merchant race that you can very quickly follow a quick path down to a very uncomfortable Doesn't stereotype. Doesn't poor, can't work on the Sabbath. <laughs> yeah. He's like a wheeler deal. It was, as I've said before on this podcast, it was David Schwimmer who alerted me to this. Uh, he gave some interview where he said he saw The Phantom Menace, which I love the idea of just thinking about just David Schwimmer one day buying one ticket to see The Phantom Menace, sitting down and seeing it, watching, watching it, having a good time. And then Watto <laughs> shows up and he's like, this is an offensive stereotype of Jews. Until that point, he was agreeing with me that it was the best of the films. Yeah, he was next to you, wasn't the he? The best of all the films ever made. Yeah, yeah it was I the best it. one yet. Oh, wait, you thought it was the best one yet? The best film? Yeah, yeah very clearly, because wow. what else would I be referring to? There of are course. no other <laughs> films in this franchise. All I could be referring to is the medium of film. It's the right. best one of these yet. Yeah, so it beat Blank Check. It, it beat like knocked <sighs> Blank Check down to number two. Yeah, I mean, talk about films with incredible sci-fi premises. <laughs> Blank Check, finally. I thought it was unstoppable, and Blank Check finally got knocked down. Mr. McIntosh got kicked to the curb. Yeah, sorry. Um, but yeah, I saw uh, Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace Next opening day Schwimmer. in Zigfield with my father, Peter Newman, my brother, Jamesy, mm-hmm. and Davy Schwimmer, yeah, Davey who Schwimmer. was my babysitter. And Davy Schwimmer leaned over and said, Watto is an uncomfortable Jewish stereotype to yeah. you. In and the, I said, get your hands off my milk duds, David! <laughs> So, uh, Watto, yeah, he owns a couple slaves, mm-hmm. and Qui-Gon makes this deal with him. Um, the hyperdrive, what is the deal? <laughs> it's if Anakin wins the pod race, he gets the hyperdrive and Anakin. They, well, originally right? it's the hyperdrive. Oh, right? No, he, right, he bets the ship as collateral, the right. actual ship. Yes. He puts that money up mm-hmm. uh, against the hyperdrive. He, I mean, he says, hyperdrive's faith. not worth it. You need to throw in a slave. And Watto's like, all right, well, how about the woman slave? And he's like, well, let's leave this to the chance. That gets up later. At first, he's just like ship for the hyperdrive. Yeah. And then he changes the deal, which, yeah, Watto really could be like, hey, man, like, yeah. Like, what are you doing, like, you know, uh, welching on me here? But, uh, <laughs> yeah, you like that word. Yeah. Um, but then Qui-Gon's like, well, we could take it up with the huts. And mm-hmm. that seems to shut Watto no down. No one wants to take it up with these huts. They seem pretty innocuous from yeah. what we see on Okay, on let's talk about the huts for a second, who are apparently in charge. Yeah. It seems to be this kind of pleasantly fat yeah. Santa Claus-like slug man. And his sister. And his, yeah, another hut. It's a family business. <laughs> Now, what's interesting is that there's another hut who is female. Yeah. But I read on Wikipedia that they reproduce asexually, so I don't really get this concept that they are male and female. Interesting. Uh, but uh, they are, yes, they are huts, 
and uh, they okay. the, all we see of them is that they start the race. They look gross. They start the race by decapitating <laughs> a creature and spitting its head at a gong. <laughs> and then uh, the, uh, Jabba the Hut, who's this person, yeah. he falls asleep. Not a person. <laughs> this He's hut. a hut. <laughs> Can you imagine if your name was David the person? <laughs> <laughs> he must hate that. What's the most interesting thing you have going about yourself? I don't know. My species? I'm a, I'm a human. David the human. Are all of them called, like, Blank the Hut? Or is he the one? And they're like, yeah, no shit, you're a hut. We're all a hut. Well, Fuck it's you. also pretty, like, imagine if, like, someone came to Earth in a yeah, spaceship and it right. was like, oh, the Galactic Senate won't find them here. Why not? It's controlled by the humans. Yeah. And what? The humans? Gross. Yeah. Oh, no. I don't want to send a princess there or yeah. a queen or whatever she is. Um, maybe the hut, well the huts maybe they're talking just about his family maybe their yeah last maybe name it's also an honorific or something like yeah. like my my last name is new man new man that sounds like a descriptor I'm a pretty young man ah uh, you're a new man you go who runs it here the new man it's like the, so that's what it is the babies and it's like no the <laughs> no they're new men the new men family exactly no you, women in your family of course you all reproduce asexually publicly yes that is our answer. <laughs> But there are no women. Anyway, so yeah, and Jabba falls asleep, and at the end of the race, he has to be woken up, which is kind of cute. Like, anyway, I don't yeah, understand. Well, as we're saying, we, yeah. we don't really get why uh, why so, everyone's so, so scared of the huts. Time devoted to these side characters who don't pay off at all. <laughs> it's like, why are we seeing this guy at all? Yeah, yeah. it's true. He's got this guy next to him and with like a big, uh, you know, sort of serpentine Bib hairdo, Fortuna. Bib Fortuna, who's like a credited cast member. He's he doesn't even do anything. Cast member. He's guys on card in the Star Wars Card Trader app. Which, by the way, has a lot of expanded we've universe talked, we've characters. We've talked about the Star Wars car straight. It's crazy. It's like 10% of it is, is actual filmic characters. And then right. all, we talked about Han Solo. Yeah. It's it's ridiculous. They have like seven cards that are devoted to an old version of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's true. They like dressed up some bearded guy in the same robe. Who looks exactly like Sir Alec Guinness. They found some guy. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. It Maybe? almost looks like they just photoshopped Alec Guinness's headshots. Onto you, McGregor? Yeah. 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 Well, you know, maybe that's what they did. I don't know. It seems like such a waste. <laughs> I mean, look, they were asked to come up with this yeah. Dark Card Trader app and uh, Card Trader app, and, you know, they had to make it look good. Disney spent $4 billion. They got to milk something out of this one movie. Yeah, exactly. They that's the thing. Stretch for time. Yep. Stretch for time. Um, okay. Let's start it up. Quick podcast. We've it? already run too long. I don't, I want to get in and out. Here we go. 55 minutes and eight in six seconds, eight seconds, we went ahead a little bit. But so, yeah. Okay, so here we are at. Um, okay, so we're panning across. The, yeah, it's gorgeous. It looks beautiful. At the, uh, what's it The Boonta Eve. Yeah, like a packed raceway. house. Boonta Eve, yeah. Yeah, and we've got uh, we've got Foden Beat here. Um, the, this is announcing packed the house. race. Just watching. Are there, there don't seem to be a lot of monitors. I mean, we know Padme has her little, her little pod race screen, but like. All these there's fans R2. The I was stand. right. Oh, you're right. Yeah, he has to drag yes. out the pottery. Anakin has two or three children helping him with his pod, which he built himself. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, it, by the way, it is very unusual apparently that a human can pod race. I mean, it's considered too fast. Yes. Which I think this is supposed to be an indication that oh, we haven't even talked about Sabul. But oh, there's here's Sibulba. a voice. Right, okay. 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 Right. So we're, we're, we're going to get through this. We have to go to Wikipedia quickly. All right. So it's a 55:48. We paused it. Uh, okay. So yeah. So uh, Anakin is a human. He can do this like thousand mile an hour pod racing. Just, so that just means quickly. he's good at the force. Quickly, I just typed Sabulbs into <laughs> Wikipedia because I forgot that they don't know my nicknames for the characters. <laughs> So it wasn't a typo. I call him Sabolbs. Sabolbs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you're getting a drink with him, yeah, you know, the local. Uh, yeah. And uh, and when we fuck. Uh, what were, I'm sorry. What were you saying, David? Well, are we going to talk about Sabolba? Sabolba yeah. is sort of the the favorite yeah. of the pod racing circuit. Yeah. Uh, as Watto says, he always wins. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. um, he flies this ginormous thing. His pod is like two huge engines and nothing else. And I think so. He goes really fast. I think is the idea. So Bulba spent his earnings on a decadent life. So they're talking about how much he wins, right? Yeah, he's a he's a dug. So yeah, he, he a dug. walks like on his hands, and yeah. he has more hands. He doesn't have feet. It's weird. Yeah. Um, and he has these big goggles. It, it says what? And he has kind of a bad attitude. Yeah. Despite their camel-like facial structures, dugs were uh, arboreal and could use all four of their limbs equally. So he's just choosing. So Bulba preferred, preferred supporting his weight with his arms and performing top, fine tests with his legs. Well, on the seat of a pod race or wherever, he used all four limbs, his arms to steer and legs to manipulate the finer instruments. So he's he's just doing that for effect. He's just peacocking. 
Well, I mean, you know, he wants to stand out. Yeah, I guess it's working. Yeah. So Bulba enjoy- spent his earnings on a decadent lifestyle enjoyed by very few dogs. His most prized possessions included a pair of, what do you think he's going to say? Shoes? Gloves? What do you think it's going to say? Uh, bracelets. Twilight Sisters. <laughs> he is also... A slave owner. A slave owner. Their names so, are Anne and Tangella, who were skilled masseuses. We know Tangella, what masseuses like the Pokemon? Mean. Tangella? Yeah. All right. Interesting. Um, we should talk about that, too. Slavery, not legal, it seems, in the actual Senate, the Galactic Republic, yeah. but legal in this kind of a outer rim situation. That's what mean. Yeah. And, People uh, love slavery. And Padme talks to Anakin and says, like, are you some, like, you know, disgusting little slave? And he says, I'm a person. Yeah. And you're supposed to be moved by this, but obviously Anakin's very annoying. But look, Sabalba only has two slaves, maybe within the realm of... of... Well, Watto only has two slaves. Exactly. So maybe everyone just has two slaves. Yeah, I don't support slaves. slavery, but maybe everyone only has two Griffin. slaves. That's the natural. <laughs> Do you want to further undo the damage you did last, last I'm just week. Say, I'm just saying maybe that's part of it. Maybe he's not worse than anyone else. Maybe everyone on this planet. I see. Yeah, yeah, sure. He, we but... know two characters well, and both of them have two slaves. <laughs> the only two <laughs> other characters two. that are very clearly established on Tatooine. Are slaves. Right. And then Gra Gra, we, you know. I don't think Gra Gra has I don't think slaves. she has slaves. Yeah. She's, She's very just well a Gorg monger. She's a Gorg monger. <laughs> She's the Norma Rea of Gorgs. Um, I will never not find the word Gorgmonger funny. It's so funny. Okay, but my point is, so Bulba only has two slaves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate slavery. I want to go public and say I don't own any slaves. I'm not Congrats. friends with any slave owners. Slow Love clap from Ben Deucer over here, there, yeah. the poet laureate of the Phantom Podcast. <laughs> but but maybe within the reality of Star Wars, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, different standards, two slaves is fine. Mm. Let's continue with his biography. He also owned at least two more female <laughs> slaves. <laughs> Were you just setting that whole bit up? Yep. <laughs> You're such an asshole. It's a long walk for a quick drink of water. <laughs> you thought I was backing myself into a hole. I was fucking alley-ooping myself for a <laughs> marginal laugh. <laughs> That's what I was doing. Oh, boy. Uh, a Rudian and a Lethin who are in his apartment <laughs> by by 32... BBY. So he lives in an apartment. Great, congrats. You think congrats, you could own a house? Simple, but- <laughs> We're talking about a desert planet. It's, like, there's space. There's space. All these huts. It, also, you said, like, 98% of the, <laughs> yeah, the planet. Yeah. Yes. But he's got to live in a fucking apartment. Why? Because he keeps on buying ladies. Maybe you don't treat women as Look, property, he's not very. He's, like, two feet tall. Maybe he just doesn't need a lot of space. Yeah, and he's got a dumb camel face. <laughs> He does. It's a bit of a. His face kind of does look like a he's camel. Got a, he's got a complex, probably, but it's like maybe some will work on your personality, and then you, some ladies will like you. You know, like, you know, w- women aren't a possession. They're not a thing to it's own. True. It's true. You know, dating is not a game. It's not a sport. You okay? I'm just saying. How's your heel? Uh, terrible. I'm bleeding so much. Uh, so Boba often used his fame for cheap dalliances with Doug females. What? Oh, interesting. He owns four women, yeah, and he's but, but leveraging the, his fame. The Doug women, yeah. you know, I think you don't want to own them. Like yeah. he, he, he's like, no, you got to chase the Doug women. Yeah. Doug, again, his species is called Doug. Yeah. Like uh, the Nicktoons character. Like the Nicktoons character. Uh, but without the O. So he owns four women. He owns four women. Yeah, he, he also sleeps dates around, around with yeah, women yeah. of his own species. Good for you, buddy. Whatever. I, he's not the best. He's not the worst. He, uh, I guess it's fine. Let's see what this next sentence is. So Bobo also had his hands in several slave rings. Okay, so he's a bad guy. He's a terrible guy. <laughs> he's a not good guy. Yeah. Uh, who who do you think uh, uh, these slave rings were for? Uh, the huts? Uh, yep. Gardella. The hut, the lady hut. The lady hut, yeah. Behind <laughs> that, Jabba that was a Preston Sturgis movie, right? The lady hut. The lady hut. <laughs> yeah, uh, starring it's set Franklin on a hut Tangborn yeah. <laughs> and Gardella the hut. It's set on a hut sail barge. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, carry on. Positively, the same hut. Yep. That's a joke for two people. <laughs> it really is. Yep. But I really hope they enjoy Positively it. Positively the same hut. What a, what a great movie. That's the best one. I watched it again like like four days ago. Oh, man. It's a masterpiece. Uh, talking Eve. Um, uh, when decked out for a race, Sebulba so always looked his finest on his heavily padded racing suit. So we're still going, talking about Sebulba here? Coins. Come on. Yeah, this, the rest of this is boring. Yeah, yeah but I think the, the crucial thing about Sebulba is he's got this giant ship, right? It's yes. cool. It's orange. It has these sort of triangular engines. Mm-hmm. And he goes really fast, and he plays dirty. 
Mm-hmm. He knocks people around. He like throws little like bombs at them or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's that's how he wins. I think. Sebulba just yeah. he just he cheats. I'm skipping ahead here. Expanded universe. Sebulba after a while took a rest, quit pod racing. His son Hecula was allowed to fly Sebulba's new pod racer six years after the Boon to Eve Classic, also being beaten by Anakin. Akula, however, was a rook. He smashed the pod racer in his debut race. Sebulba then purchased a plug F Gargantuan, a remake of his famous pod racer. Oh, enough with these remakes. <laughs> After purchase, okay. The point is, they keep okay, on enough. the expanded universe is that Anakin keeps on coming back every couple of years just to beat some just to kick his ass or his ancestors. <laughs> wow. Yeah, this petty fuck. All right. Okay, let's go. We got to get back on track. All right. So here's Sebulba. He's entering okay. the He's race. Entering the ring. We're gonna just watch. He's blowing kisses to the crowd. They are cheering. Okay, They're quick very pause. Happy. The extras in this film <laughs> are terrible. really upsetting. Every time they cut to the the extras in the stands, we're at 55 minutes. It's and like it's it's like we're suddenly watching seconds. a movie about the Crusades. Yeah. It's like a bunch of sort of like Bedouins. Like They clearly were not told what was going on in the scene or no. how to behave. They're no. just waving their arms around a lot. And especially, well, also, the way they're dressed is really unfortunate. Yeah. And there's some people, there are a couple people, extras in the stands who have like alien costumes yes. on, like yeah. masks yeah. and stuff, but they're immobile. They don't have facial expressions because they're cheaper extra costumes. Right. And right. so people are just gesticulating way yeah, too much a, to compensate a lot for of, their you dead eyes. You can't even tell if they're happy or sad. Yeah. They're usually, they're just kind of going, ah. There's one guy coming up. I'll there's point his, out. There's his ship. Well, it's yeah, so there's big. a ship. Okay, yeah. so we paused it. We're at what 55, 52. We're gonna go back into it now. Okay, and we're gonna finish this up. This could be a quick episode. Uh, yeah, so there's uh, Foden and Beater chatting. Of really? Course. All right. So there's okay, this okay, guy. We gotta pause. We gotta pause here. We gotta pause. We gotta pause here quickly because there's a new racer on the scene. He's okay. got. He's got three eyes. He's got three eyes, and yeah. his head kind of looks like a horse. Yeah. With squid tentacles coming out of the top of it mm-hmm. instead of hair. Very, very. Sleek jumpsuit. Uh, yeah, very nice jumpsuit uh, with sort of a coral, a black coral uh, mm-hmm. pattern on it. Um, and uh, and kind of like a baby Bjorn front with the baby <laughs> Bjorn removed. If it that looks makes like sense. a baby Bjorn was ripped off. Yeah. Maybe that might be his. That's his tragic, tragic backstory. backstory. <laughs> <laughs> What's this character's name? He had a baby Help me s- out here, Griffin. Stolen off his chest. Why can't I find this? I don't know. This is great. This is great, great, great. Great podcasting. So good. Why How you that? doing, Ben? Good. How's the, how's the day going? Uh, you know, editing a little bit of this, a little bit of this, a little looking bit of at that. apartments there. Ooh, me and Ben had a long talk about apartments today. Yeah, yep. But uh, we're probably just gonna cut this. Yeah, we probably will just cut this. Yep. There's a I, cue for I me editing later. Out. You hey, think ben. we should keep it in? Yeah, I like this. You're, I think this is kind of you're charming. really, really, really struggling. I am now calling up the Boon to Eve Classic. Yeah, I am too. Jeez, I thought there was like one list of all the pod racers. Now, okay, yeah, this part, this has definitely gotten to a point where now we're cutting this. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. I'm looking for, oh, Boon Teeth, let me just search for Boon Teeth Classic so maybe I'll have the list of all the people. Yeah, I already did that. doesn't work. Really? Yep. I could have sworn I before had. You know how they put out, like, like vegetables for uh, hors d'oeuvres? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they put out fennel sometimes, too, raw fennel. <laughs> Sure, hello, fennel. I'm not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like it? Just wanted to put that up there. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of fennel either. It's kind of a. I mean, you, it works sometimes. Taste. I yeah. like it. I like. Uh, I like fennel based liqueurs. Did you know that? Uh, yeah, no, I like fennel based liqueurs too. Yeah. I like fennel cooked in a salad. You know, as an ingredient. Sure, that's okay. Do we uh, know if our ha- you know Hello the- Fennel t-shirts are up in the shop yet? Ooh, yeah. Yeah, have uh, you gotten on that? I, you know, I got lost in emails, so I will get on it. Hello Fennel. Hello um, Fennel. Uh, did you know that Captain Panaka's first name is Korsh? Like Hugh Korshy, the actor who played him? No, really? Uh, all right, what are you looking at now? Are I'm we recording? To, yeah, what's happening? I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I'm trying to find this. Also, radishes. <laughs> oh, how do you feel? I like a raw radish appetizer once in a while. I've had one that was good. Uh, Maybe I don't it, know. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. They're so bland. They're pretty bland. But then I love carrots, and you know, they're close. <laughs> See, I actually don't like carrots, but carrots are sweeter. Right. And uh, I'm less into the sweet. I don't have much of a sweet tooth. And they have a better crunch to them. I radishes? Like ra- no, carrots. Yeah. Carrots radishes are crunch. like kind of fibrous. Yes, that's true. And we're back. Um, so, uh, w- uh, producer Ben is going to seamlessly edit it so it sounds like it was continuous, but I want to blow up that facade. 
Uh, we just took a 15 minute break <laughs> to, look, to up. look up to try to figure out what the name of that that random pod racer is. Yeah, it's Mahonic, which is really uninteresting. Yeah, he kind of has a dumpster butt. <laughs> he sucks. <laughs> He's sort of a piece of shit. We resent the fact that we just had to spend that much time off my. What's his species called? This three eyed species. He's a grand. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, is there like anything interesting grandma. about him? <laughs> uh, he held two speed rakers. Race. <laughs> <laughs> Mahonic held two speed records oh, and also displayed him. his aggressive side. Yeah, whatever. Bi- All right. Biography. I, I, Let me look up one interesting thing. I hope him. he dies. Oh, in addition to being a pilot, Mahonic was a pod racer parts dealer. Great. <laughs> oh, it great, could often great, be great. found in his shop where his R2 series Asthma Check droid frequently worked on his pod racer. I think that's enough about him. Uh, the only interesting thing, I'm going to hit play. Uh, yes, please. The only interesting thing about him, really, is that he he kind of gesticulates to the crowd. He gives him a little bow. Here's another guy bowing to the crowd. Uh, who's this guy? I'm going to tell you one second. Is that is this, I, this guy, Tony? He's got, like, deer antlers and, uh, like, a Minnie Mouse bow right on his head. Uh-huh. Uh, do you see it right there? The little Minnie Mouse bow? Uh, yes, I did. I'm going to look up in one second. I did find something interesting about Mahonic oh, here. Oh, go and ahead. we're moving on. All right. Uh, soon after the race, a Madden Mahonic pronounced his hatred for Sobolb and his family. He put a bounty on at least two of the cheating Doug's relatives. Wow. On Nibulba the relatives. and Exulba. Okay. The bounty hunter Django Fett, must be an Expanded Universe character. Haven't heard of him. Would eventually snag the bands while on the planet, though it's still unclear whether they were taken alive or dead. Gross. Mahonic hired someone to fucking- So that guy is- Reprehensible. Monica's a e- piece of shit. Even even in the sort of lawless uh, society that we're uh, looking at here, he's, Where slaves he's are not playing place. by the rules. Yeah. Okay. This guy with the with the he, mini mouse. He also bows to the crowd. He really. Yeah. I, this guy is useless. I got a list of everyone here. Okay. This guy's name. Oh, his name is great though. Clegg Holdfast. Oh, that's a good name. Yeah. Let's see. And then this is the last one we're going to look up because after this, we just have to get this over with. I want this to be a really quick episode. All right. Well, we'll, we'll it'll be really quick. Yeah. Okay. Clegg Holdfast. Here's a quote from him. When you spend your life racing pods, you learn to be handy with a wrench and a pitch, right? Yeah. I mean, that's self-evident. Yeah. He's got a very big uh, pod racer, very big engine. It's called a, it's called a wasp. Uh, he was a journalist for this Pod Racing Quarterly. Is fascinating. 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 Holdfast was the son of a fish, a fish catcher mother and a candle maker. A fish catcher father. Jeez. And candle a candle mother. mother. Yeah. Right. In, in truth, this was Holdfast. <laughs> I'm losing it. In truth, this was Holdfast's primary career. Pod yeah. racing itself was just a tool for him to get the inside scoop on the races. Okay, so he's almost like Paul Walker in Fast and the Furious, where yes. he's entered the world of racing simply to get the inside track on it. Mm-hmm. And that pun was intended. Many of his loyal readers protested that it was too risky a sport for him to take an active part in. Yeah, but his hardy hide enabled him to walk away more or less intact from the many crashes. Um, Thank God he's got a, a sturdy tuchus, I guess is the takeaway there. Yeah, but he mostly wrote for Pod Racing Quarterly. All right. So he's interested. So he's really, when he's bowing here, it's because, like, people don't like him as a racer. All these people are like, I can't wait to hear what Holdfast writes about this. Like, exactly, he's, yeah. He's playing up for the it, crowd because he's just lower. Right. It's, we're, okay, we're back in it now, 5607. He's yeah. stroking the sides of his face as if he has a mustache. Uh, um, yeah, we've got some oh, kind of we rhino got, guy. Oh, wait, all right, okay. all right. You, you want to do the I rhino do, yeah. guy? This is the last one. Oh, no, more of a crocodile, actually. Yeah, he's got a long crocodile him. beak. I believe his name is Dark Ralter. I want to look that up. I'm going to double check it. Dud Bolt. Oh, I remember Dud Bolt. Yeah. I see some of these I remember because I had the video game. Uh, Dud Bolt, you... uh, Star Wars Episode One Racer. Um, uh, yeah. Dud Bolt, of course, is two different words that mean idiot. <laughs> <laughs> well, but Bolt? No, you think you mean Dolt. Oh, you're right. Yeah. A dud Bolt and a Dolt. kind of in- indicates, like, fast. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, he He's a, v- a vulp- Vulpterian. Vulp- vulpterian. Uh, he's a hitman. <laughs> wow. Worked as a mid-air bodyguard for notorious fellow pilot Sebulba, a vicious duck. Interesting. So he's on Sebulba's side he's and he's Sebul- helping. What? Oh, wow. Very clever, Sebulba. He's a... I hate these guys. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, he's, 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 he's a worst. real piece of shit. Here's my question for you. Is anyone in it for the love of the sport? I don't know, man. I think Anakin is. Yeah, and, and uh, the, the, well, I always already forget his name. Malwek or whatever his <laughs> name is. The old three-eyed fucker. <laughs> He seems to be, but then he can't. He takes it too seriously. Yeah, he kills he, other he's people. He's ordering hits on family, he members. Kills family That's members. That's not cool. Slave Keep owners, and hitmen, keep it in the race. Undercover journalists. Okay, right. we're not. Anyway, looking, so I don't want to hear about any of these other people's backstories. Right, we're going to so watch the rest play, of the race. Hit play. Fifty-eight 
It's 12. 12. <laughs> we're going like we're, four seconds. We're getting it done. Okay. There's He's a got pit, pit droids, walking by. carrying little things The race hasn't him. started yet. We're almost done with the episode. <laughs> we're going to just breeze through this. Okay, here are some fans. There's okay, this guy's man. waving in the air like he does, doesn't care. Okay, All we got to right, look at this guy. Character. Because okay. I had the action figure of this guy, and I never knew the backstory. This is Odie Mandrell. I owned Odie Mandrell. Okay. Not not in a slave owner way. I owned him. I own a, a small uh, so plastic representation. He's, he kind of looks like Dick Dastardly uh, without the mustache and nose. He's got this yeah. sort of uh, back-swept helmet. Okay. Interesting. Interesting point you bring up. I thought that was a helmet. I yeah. bought the action figure because I liked the helmet so much. It is not. It is, in fact, a visor. He has a bulbous head. Oh, interesting. Okay. He's yeah. wearing a visor over a very bulbous sweater. He's got back a very head. bulbous head. He's an Urkeet. The action figure looks so stupid without the visor. <laughs> Uh, he's from Tatooine. He's one of the youngest. He's barely a teenager. Barely a teenager. Um, he is a daredevil who raced not for money or fame, but simply the adrenaline rush. Okay, so that's here, we what found I'm talking about. Yes. Yeah, uh, he would whoop and laugh like a madman as he uh, whipped around corners. And, uh, I think, you know, this is actually, we're getting some really nice color. That uh, By the way, none of this is in the film. No, this is not no. one iota of information except that Sebulba is a dirty cheater yeah. and Anakin is a sweet little angel mm-hmm. boy. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, it, apparently he eventually hooks up with this Han Solo expanded universe character okay. that we knew from the trading card. All but over the uh, trading let's card forget app. it. Yeah. yeah. Don't care. But I like Cody Mandrell. I feel validated in my uh, 15 years ago purchase of the action figure. How much was it? At the time, at those prices, $6? I don't know. No, that's pretty good. Okay, yeah. so the pit droids, are, he's got three pit droids, and they're kind of fooling around. I, I, I think my— Now, I think some of this it was added. There's Anakin. Yeah. He's, uh, well, they talk about his power couplings together. Yeah. Well, yeah, wasn't— I think a lot, a little more footage was added uh, in the Blu-ray extended Oh, I believe thing. you are correct. I think the cinematic one is slightly shorter. It doesn't have quite as much embellishment. Okay, so now they bring out flags. Every pod racer has their own flags. Yeah, C-3PO, C-3PO is carrying Anakin's is carrying flag. Carrying flag. Yeah. Okay, I don't know. Um, uh, there's oh, Jar Jar. Uh oh. Jar Jar. He's going to. Uh, uh, here's uh, a thing. It's farted. It's, you see his tush. <laughs> Jar Jar's pinching his nose because a thing just farted. We should do a whole director's commentary for this. That should be our last episode. That should be the last episode. We'll create a commentary that everyone can listen along to if you uh, want to watch the Phantom. Uh, Shmi's wishing him luck. Uh, and Sebulba that, is also George wishing him luck. George cut that scene down because it was too emotional. <laughs> yeah. It reflected human emotions. Sebulba, uh, he, he fucks with uh, Anakin's pod racer he, he a little bit there. Threw something he, off. Yeah. Now Sebulba. I can't get over the fact that Sulba could use his legs to walk, and he's just showboating. Um, are your subtitles not on here? I feel like they're they're speaking in a, a different language here. Uh, they subtitles are. My are subtitles not. are not on. Uh, we I should turn your subtitles. I on. can't get them on this. They're, I tried you're subtitles unavailable. I'm a piece of shit. Yeah, uh, they are speaking a different language. Sebulba speaks in his own language. Yeah, Anakin speaks language. in English, and they they just seemingly correspond. Uh, Qui Gon just creepily grabbed Anakin from under the armpits and lifted him into his pod. Uh, tickled his butt crack and then <laughs> grabbed his helmet. And he's giving him a little kiss on the cheek and yeah. uh, telling him to be careful and all that nonsense. I will and, uh, say, Jake Lloyd doesn't give a good performance in this scene but this helmet is his saving grace because it covers his eyes and you're able to project more emotion onto him than <laughs> he is, is giving that is true because you can't see his eyes and it really helps because usually really helps. he's just squinting which right. to be fair oh here's job of the hut okay job of the hut he's a uh, uh, sludging out mm. waving to the crowd they're all clapping for him they're over really overdoing there's it. the other one what's her name again uh G- gargella i, I can't remember <laughs> gardella the hut Gar- gardella the, 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 the elder hut. gardella the elder and he's she a, is a job hut. of the hut's like welcome yeah. to the pod race so one of them's called after his race and the other one's called after the fact that she's old <laughs> A dumb species. Uh, now the okay. pod races, pod races are all we're ready, getting going, and there's a little this creature running across. a little purple lightning bolt yeah. that indicates that the engines are working. So the pod connect. racer is basically two giant yeah. engines and then one little uh, cockpit that's sort of connected to it by basically like yes. what uh, tubes? So yeah, yeah, wires, cables. Yeah, cables. Uh, okay, Jar Jar, Padme, Shmi. Qui-Gon Jojo going up to sort of uh, perch. Yeah, they have this mask. little like skybox yeah. thing. It's pretty yeah. fancy. I bet Qui Gon paid Anakin's good money for it. Anakin's Anakin's the mo- turning this on is his. great. We're gonna get this episode done so quickly. Yeah. This is almost over. We're just the race is starting now. We're gonna have nothing else to comment on, other than the race. Here we go. Motors Engines are turning. Are this is really good, by the this way. This is so well constructed. It's really, really, really nicely done. I think. And remember when George said that he thinks they're silent films? Yeah, we're watching it as a silent film right it's now. Working and it's working beautifully. But although we must say, oh wait, Ben Burt's okay. Yeah. Shit. Right. Yeah. Well, Ben Burt. But I have to say, Ben Burt's sound design is yeah. just absolutely extraordinary in this scene. Yeah, I know we're gonna get this over with, but there's a guy here with four arms, and I gotta look <laughs> that up. Now he looks a little like the queer man that we were yes. talking about in a previous yeah, episode. No. But he's not a queer man. No, he's not. This guy's name is Gascano. 
Okay. Good um, name. He, he has a long neck, but he's not a queer man. He's a bisexual. Uh, that's a joke I came up with before the podcast. I'm reusing it. David didn't find it funny, but I think you might nope. find it funny as a first timer. Uh, Gascano, he is a Troikan. No, he's from Troikan. He's, he's a, a he's z- z- Zexto. 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 X E X T O. By Zexto. I mean, I was kind of close. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, 24 fingers total, which allowed him to do multiple tasks during pod racing, like read a book. Um, um, uh, deadliest yeah. fiends on the track, they said. One of the deadliest. If, if one was able to anger him. So I guess he's got a long fuse, but mm-hmm. you don't want it to go off. Yeah. Gardella the Elder liked him a lot, championed him. Uh, she was uh, not the only one who, who bet on him, but uh, he, he was, you know what? Many predicted, Ga- you know what? I say as if I know this. Many predicted Gascano would overtake the ball in the Boonsie of Classic. Well, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, but he did get drunk. Uh, even though he had a reputation as an intellectual. Well, that's his personal life. I don't want to get into that. <laughs> uh, he is clearly an intellectual. Yeah, he is. All right. Yeah. So, all right. Well, that's Gascano. Okay. That's all Gascano. right. So, the engines like are firing him. up my, and Ben Bird's yeah. sound design. For my my pump and grandma took me to FAO Schwartz because I was a nice boy and they said you can pick one pod racer and I chose Odie Mandrell over Gascano. And I, for years, have wondered whether or not I made the right choice because Gascano had four arms, which means more playability. True. But Odie Mandrell's not a drunk. And he's not, he's not an elitist intellectual. <laughs> and that's what you care about? Oh, oh there's a, okay, that's Doug Bolt. Uh, Doug Bolt. Okay, well, oh, oh, sorry, okay, we got to look up this guy. So this guy's got an interesting <laughs> pod racer yeah. in that it's sort of donut shaped yep. around him. Yes. It's like. Just the cockpit. Just the cockpit. Yes. Um, and he's, he's, uh, he's got big teeth. He's got kind of a dinosaur, like, flat head thing coming out of his head. I don't know. Uh, he also has a great name. What's his name? It's uh, Team Topogles. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin. Yeah. I, you know, I, it's, a, it's a – some people might say, oh, Griffin, you misspeak a lot on this podcast. How the hell Sometimes do you, you spell that? your words. T-E-E-M-T-O. Gotcha. P-A-G-A-L-I-E-S. I'm surprised I'm able to speak English by the end of these episodes for the amount of nonsense it's true. words George we George Lucas to say. really does a – he's a Vecnoid. Considered handsome by Vecnoid standards. Damn. That's a little harsh. Wikipedia. Oh shit! His story's fascinating. He was exiled from his home planet after unwittingly attracting the attention of a beautiful Vecnoid princess and resisting her attempts at matrimony. Why didn't you marry the princess, dude? Sounds good. He got good. kicked out because he didn't want to marry. I That's thought it was going to be. Oh, he slept with forbidden fruit. Then he was infatuated with one of Sebulba's masseuses. Oh boy. Oh, and he couldn't get her to no- notice him, so he bought a slave. I Look. Don't care. Okay. <laughs> God, <laughs> it's just it always takes a dark turn. Okay, but um, here's a here's a quote from him. I can drink five times as much as any being three times my height. So they're all drunk slave on it. <laughs> this is a terrible... Jesus. I hope they all perish. I hope they all die. Pagalis considered Anakin a good kid and wished him well in the race despite his drunkenness. Okay, um, okay. yeah. He, yeah, well, all right. He had the longest engines... Um, but uh, his lofty theories that that would help him didn't didn't uh, Don't bear out. This guy, this guy's a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. Okay, back to Sabola. Great start, we know though. him. The race hasn't started, but Here's it's about Anakin. to, and then we're almost done Here with this go. episode. This episode's <laughs> almost done. It's a quick. What are we up to, Ben? Eight minutes. Jar Jar is covering his eyes. You're so like 45. Well, but well, a lot of that we're going to get yeah, out. We did, Don't thir- 35 minutes were us looking up the name of <laughs> Wenchel or whatever his name is. It went well because we already forgot his name. But here's Watto <laughs> here's looking Davis. on. Okay, jab at the ceremonial decapitation of the creature, <laughs> spitting at the gong, and we're off. Woo, there oh they go. Oh, God. Anakin's oh, engines boy. have failed him, and he is not moving. He's stuck at. At zero, the starting at, line. like before zero, really. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, he's so he's flipping everything. Fuxin, uh, Fode is making fun of him, like little Skywalker. Wald uh, is incredulous. His yeah, Wald, 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 Wald is laughing, laughing so much. That's really funny without the sound on his Wado's <laughs> facial expression. He's pointing and laughing. And here come the. We're seeing the rest of the race. Is oh, and there's one other. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Oh boy. All right. Uh, so we got two, a, two engines are stalled out. Anakin and Ben Quadranero. So one hour twenty six seconds. Twenty eight seconds. Uh, yeah, one yeah. hour and 28 seconds. 26 seconds. 26 seconds. Um, okay, this is Ben Quadrano. So uh, We know uh, his name. Yeah, well, George Lucas talks about him because apparently you wouldn't know about Ben Quadrano's four engines unless you were a citizen of Tatooine. If you were a citizen of Tatooine, you go, I don't know how many engines he has. I can't tell. Four engines in front of him? I might be miscounting. But if you were on Tatooine, you go, oh, that's a classic four-engine pod racer. Uh, so I guess he got... The name from his engines, or did the engines get the name from him? We don't really know. Can I talk about his physical appearance? Well, he's quickly? a toon. Yeah, he looks like. Well, you go ahead. He looks like a vagina with two <laughs> pith, two thick sticking out of it for arms and legs. 
His head is shaped like a vagina. He has these deep, deep creases in the sides of his face that look like vaginal lips, and his nose protrudes much like a clitoris would from under the hood of those creases. Oh, my God. He looks like a vagina, and then he's got very, very skinny arms and legs. His whole body is a head. There you go. Ben wants to see this. Yeah, there, there's the yeah. F- front. Yeah. A fucking pervert producer Ben <laughs> trying to look at a vagina alien. Um, he was a coward. But buck- he buckled under... I'm sorry, do you say he was a coward or is he a, a pussy? <laughs> He's known as something of a coward. Okay. Uh, he would buckle under... I had to, I had to folks. I buckle had to. under the stress of social interaction. Yeah. Very timid. Yeah. But he wasn't spineless. Yeah. He was actually quite a good safe racer. So a bit wimpy, but right. these uh, sound quite... like all the definitions of of, of of way someone would call a pussy, right? Uh, he wouldn't be in the race at all, but a friend of his... And a, at a gimmick concert, whatever that is, had bet five million whoopoopies <laughs> that he wouldn't have the guts to enter. So Our he favorite enters. currency. So he rented this pod racing, uh, this this pod racing. Doesn't even his. his. Um, and uh, he might have uh, died, but well, we're gonna we're, let's get into it. Okay, there's nothing else. We, uh, let's get into it. Come on, let's hit. A, let's a, hit play. He's, he looks like a vagina, and he's a pussy. Um, yeah, his and so his thing's not working. He's bashing at oh, his uh, screen, and uh, that's Anakin's. embarrassing. You have four Anakin. motors. None are, oh boy, he's got it working. There he goes. All right, and we're off. And he's he's in the race. So Quadraneros, yeah. though, uh, Jar Jar's really happy about that, and Shmi's watching on a little iPad. Yeah. So does everyone have a little iPad? Because uh, the, unclear. The, already, all of the. Pod racers are out of view now. For all right, the so Sebulba is smashing. What's that guy's? Oh, he's, he's already dirty. gone. Which guy was that? Uh, the the three eyed three eyed guy. Oh, uh, uh yeah, uh, Malak Pachali. Yeah, yeah. He, <laughs> yeah, he takes him out really quickly. Yeah. knocks him against the rocky dune mountain walls. I don't know. God, whatever. I love this sequence. It's so good. The it's camera so good. moves with like actual like you know movement. Okay, to we it. gotta look this up. There's a All lady, right. <laughs> and there's this lady. There's a lady. She has white skin, orange pants, uh, big ponytail. Now when it when it said uh, Sabalba was living in an apartment, I think these are the apartments we're looking. At. Oh these yeah, these are little carvings apartments. in the rocks with so, little windows. She's got a little patio. It really is like the Ma- Monaco Grand Prix. They're going through the settlements of Mas Espa yeah. or Bunte, whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. I don't know. Now I I didn't pause this to look her up because I don't know anything about her. I know a lot about this character. I don't Go know ahead. if you know this. Dave. I have this her Star Wars tra- card trader. This character appears on screen for maybe a second and a half. And you don't even see her face. She it, is, we see her from the back. She's one of those popular characters. <laughs> In Phantom Menace fandom. Why? She's had countless toys produced, both high-end well, and low-end. She looks cool. Books written about her. Who the fuck is she? What's her name? Or uh, Ayora Singh. Grace. Or, uh, Rolls a- right off the tongue. A-U-R-R-A. <laughs> it's great when names are uh, written in ways that are almost impossible to pronounce. How do you pr- uh, Aura 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 Okay, Singh. anyway. She's got like a needle sticking out of her head. She's got she's pale, pale as a bag of flour, red jumpsuit. Nice tuchus, which I'm only saying because she's standing behind us. The tuchus is facing us. She's got a spear. Um, pe- people love her. Uh, oh, oh, the opening of her uh, Wikipedia yeah, entry is, sorry, sorry about, about the mess. mess. Yeah, this article or a... section needs to be cleaned up. Someone's going to get their Wikipedia. So she today. is a, a near human, a human hybrid. Oh, a human and what? We don't know. Unknown. She was a once a female, Je- female Jedi Padawan. And then around to the and age of nine, she was kidnapped by pirates. And then she became a bounty hunter. Specializing in Jedi assassinations. She never progressed past the point of Padwan. Interesting character. Literally seen for one second. One second. Watching the race go by. Her Wikipedia entry is 15 pages long. This, <laughs> this is the is, longest one we have ever come across. This is insane. People love her. I All think right. they just like her because she's facing the camera and she's got a nice tushy. I All think right. I think that's what it is. All I right. think Hit I play. think men are the it's worst. One oh one one two. Okay, and we're almost done. Uh, so here's Anakin uh, zooming through this sort of. There's this long. There's this like, what do you call this? Uh, cliff facing like cavern it's, cave. Yeah, it's like very narrow. A part, okay, no wait, wait, wait. Hold on one second here. Right, we go back a second here. There are these guys just standing here, right? Uh, yeah, the little robed guys. You mean? Yeah, but there's like there's like a little like a fence, and it, it looks like it's being foreshadowed. There's like a sort of like an exit ramp. Right. Yeah. Right, and these these lunatics. There's like an exit ramp with like a and police standing barricade. standing right by it. Right, there's like a police barricade that's like do not cross under construction, right? Yeah. These guys are just standing behind it. That's the thing. Anywhere you watch the pod race, like why would you spend money to go buy a ticket to sit in the stadium? You could just stand behind a barricade. Either way, Status. you're only going get, to get to see someone for two seconds. Shroom, shroom. And they're done. Status. is a status thing. It's a status thing. It's like how people watch uh, the marathon, you know? 
and you only see the marathon runners for a minute. Yeah, I don't because I'm not a dummy. And there's that, yeah. Anyway, all right. I, so I stay home and watch the Phantom Menace when the marathons <laughs> happen. So Anakin's sort of uh, making his way through the racers. We're seeing right. like he's kind of overtaking people. Dark cave. Uh, he's got this very small, very fast. Oh no! Oh no! Did we look up that guy? That guy goes before yeah, he I dies. I want to look at that guy because his reaction was really funny. He's got um, he's got sort of a frog face. Yeah, they go into this cavern and he smashes right into a stalagmite or a stalactite or something. Yeah, and he's he got is very short explodes. arms. His name is Rats Tyrell, and this is the last one we're going to look up because then we really have to finish this podcast. Yeah, and there's I don't think there's anyone else. No. Uh, rats, rats, rats. That's what he was saying when when he died. It, he really makes the most incredible noise. It's uh, it says he has incredible reflexes, except he doesn't because he just hit a stalagmite and crashed. That's the opening lines. It is incredible. Re- this whole thing is about how good his reflexes are. Well, I'm sorry, they failed him at this moment. Yeah. Quick reflexes. He grew up in a harsh environment, causing him to push his reflexes to the limit. It's a game called Rats Race. Ugh, All right. Well, okay. Enough of this guy. He's dead. Thing. Rats Race. He's the first confirmed death because I don't know. I don't know if the three eyed guy dies. Yeah. I anyway, know. so Anakin dodges the flames of that. Oh, ooh, these people these are guys? kind of interesting. All right. Okay. Okay. So how would you some... even describe these guys? Okay. So they're 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 standing up on the cliffside. They have weird little guns. They call um, them Tuscan Raiders. They're, the, the, yeah, yeah. They're the robed entirely robed. Yeah. Uh, in cloth, like the, everything about them is covered. Bandaged faces and hands. Yeah. Their heads are these like bandaged things with these two metal eye sockets. It's really yeah. really cool. Yes. Um, uh, so getting, uh, you got a text I'm message. Getting text messages. I'm like, I don't think I'm trying to talk about the Phantom Menace. Yeah, and so uh, that's uh, and they're, and they're taking pot shots. It seems. Yes. At the uh, at the uh, oh, Anakin just got hit at the pod racers. Hey, hey, I don't like that. <laughs> hey, you just think they're bad news? Yeah. Well, um, Quadraneros. We're cutting back to Quadraneros. Oh, still, this, this the Tuscan Raiders are going. Arr! And they're like lifting yeah, their guns in the air. Quadraneros is trying to get it. Oh, oh, the the oh, spot. Oh, kaboom! So each engine went off in its own direction. And that's got to hurt. They all exploded. Uh, uh, yeah. By Ben. Did, did you say that's got to hurt in the theater when it happened? Did of course. Everyone laugh? Okay. That's what I say every time that anyone gets hit in any movie that, that I ever see. Bad extra acting. So Water's- lap one done. Sebulba's in the lead. We're on to lap two. Yeah. And someone uh, pulls up. Uh, I think it's uh, yeah, Odie Mandrell. It's, it's Odie Mandrell. My boy, he's Odie commanding Mandrell. his pit droids, who are these cute little like things to fix his, and They're one of them's to about to get sucked there. through oh, his engine. Sucked in the uh, engine. The engine explodes, and it's like, woo! Yeah, I'm happy. It's weird that it survives that. Yeah, but now, but now, now he's, he's messed up. And Jabba the Hutt just callously knocked a little yeah. creature off of. That's a little mean. So Odie, Odie Mandrell's out of the race. So far, one pod racer has died. One is stuck. Two are stuck at the starting line. Yeah, and a couple have um, messed up. Uh, yeah, and Madawan is missing in action. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So there goes Anakin. Second lap complete. Okay. Uh, he's cruising through. Ooh, uh, there's a. This is a thing that looks like Odie Mandrell got four arms. Uh, selling his, thing. I see 3 ps talking four. to R2, saying, yes, do two more laps. Jesus, that oh, was crazy. Okay. Yeah, look, see, that, that mask does him so much. In oh, yeah, they, they, of, yeah, it's true. Oh, Ooh, here's Odie yeah. Mandrell's throwing thing. He's got a little video screen. He's looking at the rear view. No, that's not Odie Mandrell. It's the other guy. It's the four-armed guy. Oh, what's his oh, wow. We just talked about him like five God, seconds ago. God damn it. I can't deal this. <laughs> uh, yeah, but he's messing with Anakin. He's tossing yeah. stuff at him. Uh, Anakin overtakes him. So, Oh, he's the one who's a drunk, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's... It's a big list, but yeah. But you're right. Oh, and the donut guy is bashing yeah. Anakin. Anakin it, loops team, around him. Team Topogolies. Team Topogolies. Um, but you're right. The Anakin is wearing these giant goggles, and so he just has this like grim determination on his face. And he, uh, yeah, it really improves Jake but, Lloyd's work. But see, I would argue he doesn't even have a grim determination <laughs> well, on his just, face. I'd argue he just has a face, and because his frown. eyes are covered, <laughs> we are now able to project other things. All right, Sebulba so is throwing. Uh, something and it lands in this engine. Amazing and comes, aim! Yeah, he just throws aim. it over his shoulder oh, at high that speeds. That's the duck face guy. Oh right? wait, well we he's dead now. Up. Yeah, he's dead. Or his engines have exploded. He looks pretty dead. He looks pretty dead. Whoa! Oh yeah, hey, he just hey. slashes by Anakin, knocks his coupling off, and uh, you know how when they're like that. talking about betting on Anakin, and they're like, "So have you won before?" And he's like, "Well, he's uh, never finished a race." He says, "Right," and they're like, "Jesus Christ, you haven't even finished a race, kid." 
Uh, finishing a race is near impossible. Yeah, if we get any a lot of people away. don't finish races. It's amazing he's alive. Most people die. One guy never even got started, right? How is his mother letting him do this, by the way? Okay, so he's got this magnet And also, stick. he's a slave. Like, uh, uh, slaves are allowed to race in this? I don't know. Anyway, he's doing this very impressive thing where he links his coupling back to his ship. Slaves using, are like, allowed magnetics. to race. Drunks are allowed to race. Yeah. Reporters are allowed to race. <laughs> I was like, this is lawless. Uh, so now, and he's back on track, and okay, he's just... Great. So his ship must be really fast. Because he's going around everyone really quickly, but I think the reason for that is it's very small, so he can he's more vulnerable. But he has like a he's kind of he's kind of like Toad, I well, think. And he's, he's in the good, Mario Kart. Yes, he's good at robotics too. I mean, robotics. He's good. He's a good engineer. Oh no, of course. It's just the fact. Oh, okay, uh, Donut Team guy Apogolies. just got hit by a Tuscan yeah. Raider. Yeah. Uh, I don't care what universe you're from. That's got to hurt. Yeah. Uh, great line, great Says job. Fode. Yeah, that was a ten Greg points, Krupp's original. Greg Krupp's a 10 points. Uh, okay, so now Anakin and Sebulba are no. closing, and it's the final lap. Great. Everyone cheers. Jar Jar's going nuts. They're the only two left at this point. Um, right? They're the only two that we see, at least. Yeah. Almost yeah. everyone else has died. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really, really costly. There must yeah. be so much money riding on that. All right, so this is great aerial camera shot of them sneaking through. Hey, here's a thought. Oh, if if you don't so cool. die, but you just crash in the middle of the desert in this really, really long track, how do you get back home? That's You're just a, a stuck question. there. You don't have a vehicle. I, I have no idea. As you Maybe said, 98% like... is unpopulated. Okay, so here we go. Sebulba's knocking Anakin onto the exit ramp, onto the safety ramp, whatever the hell it is. Look how much smaller Anakin's pod racer. Oh, okay, here we go. So now they just almost killed all those people standing there. <laughs> Anakin almost did it. He was yeah. almost responsible for their deaths. He's cruising through the air. Anakin's like, whoa, what the fuck? Whoa. But then it's and like then a shortcut. he's crashing down and he goes, bam. He, he loops he back loops, up. And he hits lands. his engines yeah. and lands ahead of Sebulba. It's an impressive move. And what's Sebulba supposed to do now? I don't know. So I think if Anakin is the toad. Oh, now this guy. Okay, this guy here is giving thumbs down in the crowd. <laughs> well, his hands are flippers, so I That's don't know if you can call that. He's got he's got stupid alien hands, and he's got like 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 Dan DeVito penguin hands, and he the guy clear the actor is making the choice of I don't like Anakin. I'm against what's happening in this okay, race. Okay, yeah, right he now. he doesn't want Anakin to be. in I the think lead. that's what the actor is doing, but yeah. he doesn't realize that his the hands he's wearing don't enable him to properly give thumbs down. Well, you know what? I mean, it's tattooing. Maybe thumbs down means thumbs up. What do you know? Yeah. Um. Okay, so Anakin's in the lead. Okay, it's crazy. On. Everyone is watching. So, by the way, yeah. just the landscape of it, it looks like they're racing on like the Utah salt flats or whatever. You know, they oh, a couple little classic guys. sort of uh, uh, John Ford. Uh, yes, Vista exactly. Vision, These uh, big like eroded yeah. like stone monument giant valley. Monu- yes, yeah. like monument valley. That's what I was. That's thinking the term of. we're looking for. Okay, this thing's almost falling off. That's the thing that Sebulba. Yeah, Sebulba messed with Anakin's up. pod, and now it's about to. Which can you fail. imagine how? Thoroughly, he would be winning if he hadn't knocked off this. Yeah, thing. Anakin really does a great job considering uh, the amount of shit he has to go through. He's the best. He's got better instincts because of his blood disease, and yes. he's he's a better engineer than the rest of them because he's a slave and he has no choice but to figure out how to make things well. So yeah, his pod is belching smoke into Sebulba's face, but then Sebulba overtakes him. And a lot of these pods too. They're the worried. guys, Padme and Shmi, are looking at the iPad, very worried. I don't know. The guys racing these pods didn't make them. They don't really know. But Anakin made his pod. He made it. He closes the exhaust flap. He extinguishes the flame. That's a, I mean, smart this is all by the way. Solving. It's all the language of this. I feel like is pretty good, considering there's no explanation for what's going on, which is very rare for Star Wars. Mostly everything's being explained to us in this movie. This is entirely here visual. he's just like yeah, he messes with the engines a little bit. We see the levels. One he engine had too it. much power; it was knocking out of balance, so he leveled them out. And he lowered the power he on one. Flicks the switch, which and then there it goes. We hear the engine go, and then bam, he's ba- back. Both in are back up. Oh, and, he goes and like now this. okay, that was a little bit of acting because he has like an ooh he has, really he grits his face. Teeth. Yeah, he's got a real grimace on his face. All like right, he's a kid okay. I like this. We're Blasting yeah. through this now. Oh, this, this, this is looks great. so this is good. Such a good I'm rock hard right now. Oh, this is Jesus. unbelievable. Yeah, the table's rising up. Yeah. The table's um, <laughs> uh, and so okay. now they're they're back in the like cavern thing. David, what if this is the best movie ever made? No, if we're only so. watching this one yeah, scene, well, it really feels like it. Uh, although I think Saboba could be cooler. As a character, talked, yeah. He's a little annoying. Well, he's like a dick. Is that what you're saying? Like, chill yeah. out, be cooler. I think, I think he could. There could be a little more depth to his villainy. Oh, sure. Anyway, now they're bashing, and they lock. Now, I'll oh, admit, I don't boy. quite understand what happens here. They lock. Some wires got tied. Ooh, this kid is not happy. Yeah, and, and Qui-Gon's pointing at this very deliberately. No, bad, bad, this bad. Is so... They have locked their cockpits together. I like that we're not even explaining what's happening on screen anymore. We're just saying, this kid's not happy. So if you're not at... 
<laughs> one hour, eight minutes, and 57 <laughs> seconds, then you don't know what's going on. Um, but just trust me, there's a kid who's not happy. Yeah, and Shamia can't even look at the iPad. And everyone's Qui-Gon looking away. Everyone's wondering, like, Jesus, did I bet on the wrong kid? Have I been grooming the wrong kid? They're, they're and then tied up. he what? does something, he starts his engine, and Sebulba's fucked. I don't really get why. Yeah, what I don't does he either. do here? But it smashes Sebulba's engine. It looks Sebulba great. was choosing not to start his engine? What yeah, was I the, don't know. What was the I think he just, he, anyway, Sebulba is done. He crashes out. He we says, know he's not dead because he has grandsons. Yeah, he's there. He's he just pissed poo-doo. off. At least he's within walking distance of the. Well, and Anakin, there he goes. He wins. Finish line. Kaboom! He wins. Everyone's really happy. First human to ever win a pod race. It's a great sequence. My dick is becoming flaccid again. Yeah, it's over. There We're we back go. to. We know what's coming next. It's a bunch of Qui Gon chatting about mini chlorians. A bunch of blood disorder. <laughs> Nonsense. Okay. Uh, Foden and Beater are singing and dancing. They're, dancing, they're swinging they're their heads together. Heads like Stevie Wonder. Uh, and then uh, Anakin's being celebrated by a bunch of. Oh, that, oh that guy's like, back. The thumbs so down guys. The they're thumbs down overacting guy. with his hands, clapping too much. <laughs> and now he's being too lifted on, on Qui Gon's shoulders. Yeah. Of course, Watto is screaming Furious. at his uh, at his compatriots. Jabba is asleep. Boy Fortuna wakes him up, and he's like, "Oh, good, good." And he notices Anakin. He goes. Mm. Okay, that's the end of the greatest sequence ever constructed in any film. Well, I don't know about that. It's number one. <laughs> um, but I would agree with you that it is the best part yeah. of the movie. Well, uh, we always try to, you know, every week oh, figure yeah, out what the movie is about. I I think the answer we have this week is what is what should this movie be about? It should, it should be, be about, about pod, pod racing. racing. It should, just be about pod it racing, should be really. called Star uh, Pod Racing Episode One. The pod race that Anakin is in. That's what you like, George. You like vehicles. That's all you care about. I would I would really like a nice 90-minute movie about this world. Yes. And these aliens, we've explored a bunch of them. They all have great backstories, rejecting princesses and uh, buying many slaves. And, uh, well, they're okay backstories. Well, yep. Just add to that point, I'd like to hear maybe uh, some original desert music. Yeah. Because those are, you know, those are uh, some you like- interesting people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, and and exactly. Much more reason to go from like interesting location, interesting location, race after race. Yes. Ooh, where are we now? What's yeah. this place like? Coruscant, whole city's a planet. Whole planet's a city. Uh, get out of here. Um, there is a <laughs> there is a game. Um, the Nintendo sixty four game. You mean right? The episode one Stars racer. episode yeah. one racer. But then yeah, there was a, a follow up game that came out like a year or two later called Super Bombad Racer. Okay, didn't know that one. That was essentially the same. Super Bombad Racing. That was essentially the same. You had some non pod racers. You could race as like Darth Maul or or Jar Jar or Yoda. I bet Jar Jar was real good. Yoda's vehicle was his little flying toilet chair. <laughs> Are you kidding me? It wasn't really. Wasn't you know, it's 100%. I'm going to show you right here. The The hook to this game was that they were stylized. See, look. Here's, uh-huh. here's the little... He's got his little poop thrown. And oh, I see. They've got, like, big heads. Yeah, they got big heads. They're, like, caricature. They look Whereas like... Whereas the episode one racer was, like... It was basically, like, a Formula One game. Right. This was a PlayStation 2 like game. Like, you could fix your engines and stuff and, like, get better uh, upgrades. Yeah. This came out a year or two later. It's actually mostly not pod racers. The only pod racer in the game is Sebulba. What, everyone else? In it? Uh, yeah, but he's fighting his uh, his Naboo starfighter. Oh, cool. Uh, uh, Amidala is in the Royal Starship. Uh, Boss Nass is on a uh, stingray. Uh, Yoda's in a poop chair. Um, <laughs> Jar Jar's uh, flying the embarrassment of an entire race. <laughs> um, the shame of a nation. Uh, that's what he's flying. Um, but it's it's a it's a very very stylized game, and I always wondered what was Bombad, what what did Bombad mean? I was okay. like, is that a word I don't yeah, know that describes the caricature style? Because to me, it just looks like it, it, all the Phantom Mask characters went to a bar mitzvah. And those were their parting <laughs> they gifts. Got, yeah, they got caricatures made of themselves. Uh, so where do you like to poop? Uh, your throne? Okay, so I'll draw you. Put, uh, that's that's what I thought. So I looked up the word Bombad. <laughs> yeah, what happened? I don't I don't like the start. I don't like the sound of this at all. I think it's going to be terrible. It's going to mean, like, slave owner. Well, no, I don't want to tell you. No, come on, tell me. It just means superb. <laughs> so super superb racer, is that what the... In Gungan. The... <laughs> I thought Bombad was a term in the real world that I didn't know. It was. It's a Gungan term, means superb. So it just means super superb racer. <laughs> Star Wars Episode One. The or Phantom if you are super... a Gungan, it means nonsense, superb nonsense. Right, there's Bombad General <laughs> is a rank. <laughs> superb General. It's yeah, he's the superb general. I don't I don't know. Okay. Oh, that's that's the term they give to 
to Jar Jar. God, he's named Superb General. You said dumb General. grand. Jar Jar bringing Yuzin and Naboo together, so we said make you Bombad General. I vaguely remember that, yes. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's a Bombad, a Bombad man. Yeah, it's a real pile of shit. Yeah. Um, David, I don't... I <laughs> so I, I think that what is the movie about with pod racing... We kind of like, we just, there's really nothing, like, you know, that's just George Lucas having fun, right? The most yes. you can say is that it, it's there to underline Anakin's inherent skill, like, which is apparently the force or whatever. You yeah. know, like, that even at this young age, he has this preternatural talent, he has instincts, reactions, he can almost see things before they happen, right? right. So yeah. Like, fine. I don't know. <laughs> it's an excuse for a good race. I feel like that's our takeaway at the end of every episode is fine. <laughs> Um, okay, George. No, I would. I would argue that the the, the problem is th- that this sequence doesn't really have anything to do with the yeah, rest of the movie. Yeah, and it does kind of seem like it's queuing up a huge line of toys and video games. Like, right. it's the one part of the movie where you're like, oh, I see. Like, this is just this is a huge merchandising opportunity. Right, which it did successfully. Yeah. Um, I mean, whatever. Uh, can't fault them. Right. It's but, really crazy. No one made a sequel to this movie because it God. made money on every single front. I know. They should just make more pod racing stuff. Yeah. Uh, it, it should just be a pod racing specific sequel. Here's merchandise spotlight. Here's a a, a, a pod race a domino track. It's like when you set up dominoes to knock it's over terrible. and trigger other I things. I hate it. It looks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. Spans the finish line. Jar Jar, not Jar Jar. Uh, Jabba's there sleeping. You have to knock over dominoes to wake him up. Hey, uh, you know that thrilling race sequence. What if instead of vehicles moving at high speeds, it was just yeah, dominoes domino knocking after each domino. other over? <laughs> it was a racetrack domino. What a nightmare. Um, that's a merchandise pilot. I'm done. I give up. This is t- t- dang the movie. I want to like this movie so much, David. <laughs> Every week. Well, I mean, I think we're basically, we've basically covered almost everything about this movie. We covered most everything. We're going to do a couple outside the box episodes coming yeah. up. But as we said, I mean, we are we are winding down here. So definitely, you know, send us uh, uh, Griffin and David Presents at gmail.com. Yes, sir. Uh, that is our email address. If yeah, so you send in want, uh, what you think this movie is about. Write in with your thoughts. If you want to hear your thoughts read out on Griffin and David present the Phantom Podcast. Audio clip, like two minutes or less. Just give us your quick little... Whatever. We want we want a quick, easy capsule answer for what this movie is about. Biology versus physics. That email address again is present at gmail.com. Yeah. All, all one word, all written out. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still looking at, at Pod Race merchandise. They, they made some Angry Birds bullshit. All right, Ben. Time to close up shop. That's, I think that's time. That's yeah. that. That is that. See you guys next week. As always, we still love you. Long time. Ugh. <laughs>